In the opening scene, we are introduced to an astronaut, Molly Woods. She has recently returned home from a 13-month solo mission aboard the space station Seraphim. The prolonged space journey has taken a toll on Molly's body as she struggles to readjust to Earth's atmosphere. Her little son Ethan appears worried for her well-being, but her husband John assures their boy that she'll be alright. The scene then cuts to a house party, thrown by John on the occasion of his wife's return. All of their friends and families are in attendance. Amidst their enjoyment, one of Molly's friends offers her a drink, but she declines it. She claims that her doctor has urged her not to have any drinks until her test results come out. Later that night, as Molly goes to take out the trash, a shadowy figure appears on the street nearby. However, when she turns away for a second, the figure inexplicably disappears. Meanwhile, as John is trying to put Ethan to sleep, the boy says he needs a flip. What? In response, John opens a small compartment in Ethan's back and replaces what seems to be some sort of battery. Here, it's revealed that Ethan isn't a real human, but an artificially intelligent android created by John. I hope Molly knows. The next day, Molly visits the International Space Exploration Agency, or ISEA, to meet with her physician friend Sam for her health assessment. Sam, who has repeatedly gone through all the tests, delivers shocking news. Molly is pregnant, bewildered. She wonders wonders if it will be another robot baby, and how it's possible because she has just returned home from a solo mission, and moreover, she is infertile. Despite this, her friend asks if she was alone on the spaceship. The movie then goes into a flashback, depicting Molly's time up in space. She is working on some kind of plant experiment when she receives a video message from her son and husband. As she proceeds to watch it, the connection abruptly drops. She asks her AI assistant Ben about the matter, to which he responds that it's due to solar flares. Molly and instructs him to restart the communication system, but the entire power, including Ben, goes out. Sensing something amiss, she goes to check and fix the power cable manually. While in the cable room, she sees her deceased ex-boyfriend Marcus through a porthole, who approaches the glass and writes, help me, she's gonna get knocked up by the porthole ghost. Back in the present, Molly requests Sam to keep it a secret and give her some time to figure things out. Later, she is questioned by her superior, director Alan Sparks. He is skeptical of her explanation about how several hours of video files were erased from the Seraphim's database. Despite this, she insists that she accidentally deleted it instead of duplicating. Meanwhile, John is given a presentation on his latest project, the Humanix, in front of a leading company called Yasumoto Corporation. John talks about androids at banks and medicist robots that can do functions but lack the emotions. He then introduces Ethan to everyone, whom he's trying to program with day-to-day -day human experiences. He seeks approval and funding from the board to advance his project. One of the board members asks him about his emergency termination plan in case the Humanix misbehave. This question offends John, and he asserts that no parents will ever think of ending their child's life. Unfortunately, the board doesn't like this answer, and they damn well shouldn't because it's obviously unhinged, so they deny the funding. In the next scene, Alan goes to meet the chairman of the Yasumoto Corporation, Hideki Yasumoto, who also happens to be Molly's employer. Alan expresses his suspiciousness regarding Molly's explanation because she she doesn't generally make such mistakes. In response, Hideki instructs him to keep a close eye on her. Alan then talks about John's interest in getting funding from him. Hearing this, Hideki immediately summons John to meet in person and grants him the funding, regardless of what his board decided earlier. Later in the evening, Molly spends some time with her son in the park. While there, she receives a balloon with a note that reads, I know what happened to you. Intrigued, Molly opts to search for the man who sent it, but Ethan refuses to go with her. When she forces him, the boy angry angrily storms off into the woods. Molly chases him and eventually finds him standing over a dead pigeon. That night, she talks about the incident with her husband, asserting that Ethan has changed a lot. However, John brushes off her concern, claiming it to be part of a growing process. Afterwards, Molly is alone in her room when she again recalls the spaceship incident, continuing the previous flashback. We see that she opened the door for Marcus, letting him enter the ship. Marcus was inexplicably standing firmly on the ground, while she was floating due to gravity. He then approached her and gently touched her, rendering her unconscious. Sometime later, Molly woke up and immediately proceeded to check the CCTV footage. Much to her shock, the footage showed all of her movements, but there was no 
sign of Marcus. This revelation freaked her out, so she frantically deleted all the footage. In the present time, Molly goes to dispose of the garbage outside the house, during which she notices a man. As he approaches her, she's shocked to recognize that it's Harmon Krieger, a fellow astronaut who supposedly committed the unthinkable. He claims to know what happened during her mission, but before they can talk, John calls her from inside. As a result, Harmon leaves, promising to come back later. The next morning, Molly wakes up and heads downstairs to prepare breakfast. She's greeted by her husband, who is already dressed up for work. Before departing, they discuss their plans for the day, and John tells her about a romantic lunch date he has arranged for her. Following this, he arrives at his new workplace, and his co-worker gives him a tour. John is awestruck by his new lab, which is everything he's ever wanted. Back at home, as Molly is playing with Ethan, she hears a thumping sound. Upon checking, she is shocked to encounter Marcus in the kitchen. She then experiences a sudden abdominal pain, causing her to collapse to the floor. Ethan hears her fall and rushes downstairs, only to find his mother lying down, unconscious. He also notices strange movement in her abdomen, but he ignores it and proceeds to wake her up. He asks if she's okay, to which she affirms, I'm fine, robot child. I just have an alien ghost astronaut baby in my tum. Later that day, Molly takes Ethan to a museum where he and some other kids enjoy the holographic images of birds and animals. While the kids play around, Molly is approached by Sam. She reveals that Alan is continually pressuring her for Molly's health report. However, the latter says that she needs some time to uncover the actual matter. Furthermore, she confesses that she saw Harmon and claims that he faked his own death. At this point, Sam reveals that Harmon had abnormalities in his brain scans, which she thinks is some sort of neurovirus. She fears that Molly also has the similar abnormalities, but the latter dismisses her concern. Instead, Molly says that she wants an ultrasound to confirm her pregnancy because she doesn't trust anybody at this point. Sam complies and promises to find a place off the radar to do so. Don't worry, honey. I got an ultrasound guy. In the meantime, Ethan is seen talking to an information robot regarding the evolution of humans. The robot explains the theory of natural selection and defines extinction as something that happens to the weaker species. Ethan appears curious, but before he can talk further, Molly shows up and takes him away. Unbeknownst to them, Harmon has been watching them from upstairs the entire time. As the mother and son leave the museum, Harmon recalls his time in the space station, leading us to another flashback. Turns out he was working on something when he experienced a power cut, exactly how Molly experienced. He then grabbed a flashlight and went to check, only to find several footprints on the floor. He cautiously looked up and saw his mother, leaving him in utter shock as she had passed away 30 years ago. Back in the present, Molly drops Ethan to John's lab as Hideki wants to meet the boy in person. Following this, she goes to ISEA, where she secretly accesses the footage of Harmon's mission. In some of the footage, she sees Harmon frantically barricading a compartment door. Before she can watch further, she hears someone approaching, so she flees the building. Right outside, Harmon picks her up in a car and drives her to the remote location where he's been living currently. Upon arrival, he confides his entire experience he had in space. As the earlier flashback continues, we see how his mother touched his face in the same way Marcus touched Molly's. He's about to get pregnant, too. This freaked him out, so he escaped to the other compartments. But much to his horror, his mother pursued him, inexplicably making her way through every locked door. Despite being in a panicked state, he managed to trap her in the airlock and ultimately released her into space. According to Harmon, he shared his experiences to the ISEA members, but they believed him to be schizophrenic. Molly relates to his story and asserts that they need evidence to back up their claims. Afterwards, Sam picks up Molly and drives her to a veterinary, where she carries out her ultrasound. To her shock, it shows a healthy and normal 14-week-old fetus. On the other hand, John is seen waiting for Molly at a restaurant, a lunch date which she seems to have forgotten. That evening, Molly confronts Alan with the news of her pregnancy and questions what he has done to her, but he offers no explanation. Alan then goes to Hideki and relays the news to him. He also asks if the pregnancy means they have found them, to which Hideki vaguely replies, I think they're already here. Meanwhile, Molly returns home and apologizes to her husband for not showing up at the restaurant. John notices something amiss, but he doesn't force her into disclosing it. He offers her time, also assuring her that she doesn't need to go through it alone. Early the next morning, Molly returns home from her jog to find Alan waiting outside. He wants her to come to a contained ISEA area for testing over a couple of days. He claims that her pregnancy is the result of a covert internal agency pregnancy experiment in in which they mixed up just the right frozen ingredients from John and Molly. Despite being shocked by the revelation, Molly refuses to be quarantined and 
and walks away. Apart from all this, Ethan gets ready for his first day of elementary school. John and Molly go to drop him off at school. But much to their dismay, the other parents express their concern for their kids being around a robot. However, the couple manages somehow to convince them that their son poses no threat. He's just been researching extinction and pulling the wings off pigeons. Normal stuff. Later, Molly goes to Harmon's trailer to ask if he had to undergo tests after his return. But upon reaching there, she doesn't find him. She looks around the trailer and sees a strange symbol shaped as an Apollonian gasket. The same evening, John throws a birthday party for Molly to compensate for the one she missed while in space. Several friends, family members, and colleagues attend the party. In particular, Molly is surprised to see Marcus's brother, Tim. The two then have a private conversation regarding Marcus and how much they've suffered since his death. Sometime later, Sam stops by the party and takes a sample of Molly's blood to conduct a DNA test. In the midst of the ongoing party, the power goes out, so John goes to his study room to turn on the generator. There, he finds a bird captured inside a box. As he proceeds to inspect it, Ethan shows up and admits that he was the one who did it. This upsets John, so he forbids the boy from repeating such activities, as well as from keeping secrets. In response, Ethan claims that Molly has also kept a secret from him. In the next scene, John confronts his wife privately in their room. Molly finally reveals to him that while she was in space, the ISEA experimented on her without her consent, and as a result, she is pregnant. The revelation leaves John in shock, but he assures her that he'll support her in uncovering the truth. For now, they both decide to enjoy the party. Molly is then surprised with a special video message from John and Ethan, which makes her feel real special. But now that they have a real baby on the way, it's probably time to terminate that weird little robot robot thing. A few hours later, the party eventually comes to an end, and Molly thanks everyone for their presence. As everyone prepares to leave, she starts looking for Tim, calling out his name. John is perplexed to see this, and claims that he isn't here. Molly then checks a group photo they took a few moments earlier, and finally realizes that John is right. She was hallucinating all of it. This incident makes her realize that she's going insane, so she finally decides to quarantine herself and calls Alan. Not long after, he arrives to pick her up, and the two drive off. On the other hand, Sam heads towards her lab to carry out the test, but she is prohibited by security from entering. They claim that there has been a chemical leak. Sensing something amiss, she sneaks inside through another hallway and notices the ISEA team moving all of her stuff away, speculating that they're up to something. Sam calls Molly at home, but she is told by John that his wife is on her way to ISEA with Alan. As a result, she hurriedly texts Molly to get out of Alan's car upon receiving the message. Molly senses danger, so she jumps out of the car and starts running away. She fortunately comes across John, who had been tailing her out of concern. In the final scene, Alan and an ISEA assault team break into Molly's home, only to find it empty. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.